on design of experiments in, in engineering. And first of all, I thank to Dr. G. Venkatesh for accepting our invitation and uh, giving uh, this uh, keynote address in this uh, one week STTP program on design of experiments uh, in engineering. And uh, I thank Dr. Varun. He arranged uh, eminent speakers like uh, Professor J. Ram Kumar, Amandeep Singh, and uh, Saurav Datta, and uh, Dr. G. Venkatesh, and Dr. Jay Kumar, K. Venkatrao, and G. Sangamesh for this uh, program. And uh, this program is useful to all branches of uh, engineering, even in his uh, address, Dr. Varun, even he shown the participants uh, registered from different uh, branches of engineering. Definitely this uh, one week ASAT sponsored uh, this STTP program on, on this uh, design of experiments. Definitely it will improve the interpretation skills of the experimental data. Definitely because uh, many the faculty, even students, they are doing uh, experimentation and they are submitting their thesis. thesis. Uh, because of, suppose if they, they don't have this uh, knowledge of this uh, design, design of experiments, they, they have to do unnecessarily many experiments. Suppose if they know this design of experiments, definitely they can optimize and they can reduce the number of experiments and thereby they can save the cost. Okay, and uh, this program is uh, designed with a aim of uh, even uh, to reduce the design, to reduce the experiments and at the end in this program, even the organizers, they include case studies, okay, because uh, the case studies are very important uh, uh, in nowadays. So they included the case studies and even uh, they are conducting some hands-on sessions, okay. And uh, my request is kindly make use of this uh, workshop and definitely you gain the knowledge in this uh, area and it is a very, what is that interesting and it's a upcoming area. Definitely, if you know this area, definitely you can use this, uh, what is that uh, knowledge in your, uh, what is that uh, research work as well as you can say, you can transfer this knowledge to your students. My request is attend, uh, my request to the participant, participants is attend all the sessions and gain the knowledge and uh, and uh, once again i thank dr varun and his team for uh, organizing this uh, program and i thank dr venkates once again for accepting our invitation thank you dr varun thank you sir thank you for the valuable words and thank you for the support for organizing it uh, in time uh, thank you sir and uh, I also want to mention one another thing. This is uh, those who are joining it for the second time. They are going to have a benefit of uh, having more uh, case studies. And also this time we have also planned uh, one session on MATLAB uh, oriented uh, uh, design of experiments. And even that is going to be interesting. Of course, there are the resource persons are different. So even their case studies is going to benefit them for their uh, research work and uh, if any doubts are there you can also interact with the resource person and with this uh, i would like to request uh, uh, today's uh, speaker uh, g venkateshwar garu to uh, take the session so venkatesh sir yeah yeah uh, thank you dr uh, murli krishna garu and uh, thank you dr varun uh, uh, everyone, I would like to say good morning to all. So, shall I start sharing, uh, Dr. Varun? Sharing yes, sir. Screen? Yes, sir. I'm, I, yes, sir. Now I have stopped sharing. So, you can share the screen now. So, my PPT is visible? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. okay. 
so good morning one and all so you may also switch on the video for capturing then later on if bandwidth is not supporting we may remove sir yeah yeah sure Sure. Fine. 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 Yes. So, good morning. So, welcome to uh, first day and first session of this today's SCTP on design of experiments in engineering. Right. So, we all know what is the importance of design of experiments and how do we utilize this design. in order to reduce our number of experiments and also in order to get more information about our experiments in a very well planned and better way so let us start discussing on overview of uh, design of experiments and also we'll see how do we implement this design of experiments with the help of a case study and also i would like to show you how the software can be utilized for analyzing the results etc in today's session yeah overview so approaches to experiment so we we'll, i would like to cover today approaches to experiments so what is design of experiments definition of design of experiment so why doe so why we use doe history of doe so basic examples what are factors levels and responses and general model of uh, process or system in doe and there are some keywords always we uh, talk about in doe they are like interaction randomization blocking and replication so what is the what is the effect of this uh, what is the meaning and what is the uh, use of this interaction randomization and how do we design and how we do randomization and where this interaction is required blocking replication etc next experiment uh, design process types of doe so we'll we'll have a overview on types of doe like one factorial what is one factorial and how it can be performed two factorial okay fractional factorial screening experiments and response surface and finally doe selection type right how do we select Uh, our uh, suitable doe on what basis we all know that on basis of our uh, number of factors and levels we would like to select right but there are various options nowadays like one factorial two factorial full factorial fractional response surface screening experiments such as uh, taguchi etc so i would like to give you some idea with the help of case study as well so how do we select the suitable design for our uh, problem what we learn basically in this presentation so basics of doe so full factorial design fractional factorial design screening experiments and uh, i i would like to show some glimpse of uh, design expert software with the help of my case study and how the analysis etc can be evaluated and extracted from the software basics of doe approaches to experimentation approaches to experimentation so trial and error method one factor at a time and design of experiment right so once if you want to do experiment or once you have an idea to start experiment generally what you will do first you will do some trial and error method right so some people may don't know how to cook but if they are supposed to cook for uh, if they are supposed to cook then they will do some trial and error method right they will add some salt they will add some uh, uh, ingredients and they'll start cooking that is a trial and error method one factor at a time means we choose uh, one factor and uh, we change the levels of that particular factor and the remaining factors we will keep in constant and we can uh, do the experimentation and the third approach is design of experiments right so we are discussing on design of experiments right so we want a full factor effect with less number of uh, experiments so how do we design it so that is what important so in these three different approaches we can uh, 
plan our experimentation either we can go for trial and error method so generally when you start new thing when you start new thing we perform first trial and error method and then we go we perform some pilot experimentations pilot experimentations we will able to understand what are the levels and what are the parameters etc uh, or what are the variable parameters what are uh, dependent parameters independent parameters etc we will we'll get some idea right and based on that we can uh, design our experiments in a better manner for better understanding and as well as better output so what is uh, doe basically so design of experiment is a powerful statistical technique for proving product or process designs and solving process or production problems right so it can be means many people might have might be working on development of a product or development of a new process right so pharmaceutical uh, generally they prefer uh, to develop a product means uh, they they might be many people might be working on development of a new product and they will go for patent etc right in order to develop a product they they will uh, search lot of uh, uh, chemicals involved in it and there will be lot of uh, materials involved in it and you should have a proper proportion of uh, these proper proportion of these uh, materials and chemicals used in order to develop a product right so in such cases doe will help you to statistically analyze the data and also it will gives you uh, uh, optimum uh, <clears throat> proportions of the material and as well as product when you are working on uh, uh, techniques such as uh, response or phase etc right so uh, in many cases either it can be a product development or it can be a new process so design of experiment will helps a lot for uh, for solving the problems right so if you have any problem in uh, developing a product then you can approach doe right in my case when i was working on uh, my phd work my phd thesis on uh, abrasive flow machining so in that particular process uh, we have two approaches to design two approaches to design and also two approaches to proceed our uh, research to uh, means to uh, extend our research scope one is to develop a new product so in my case the product is uh, a semi solid uh, liquid means uh, means sorry it's, it's a semi solid product which is a mixture of uh, uh, which is a mixture of uh, visco elastic polymer say in that case uh, while developing a new product while developing a new product i i have selected uh, some four to five products which are having similar properties uh, with respect to the existing one so the existing one is actually a semi solid visco elastic polymer so that is made of some chemicals so that is the existing one so i started my research uh, by developing an alternate product to that product the already available product with the help of doe how how do i plan so i selected some natural materials which behave same as the existing commercial product say for example the rubber so i have chosen some rubber Uh, natural rubber from the tree milk which is having the same properties such as visco elastic and also polymer etc so i have selected rubber and second i have selected some synthetic rubber and i got this synthetic rubber from kotayam so uh, in synthetic rubber again there are various uh, grades so uh, finally i got some five to six materials which which are having a similar kind of properties when compared to uh, the commercial product available for my process so in that case i got some confusion like which one is better and how do i choose the best one among the five products i received from kotayam and natural products etc so i applied doe i applied doe and i got some conclusion that which one is better so doe means design of experiments i conducted uh, i conducted uh, experiments on the product development i have analyzed which one is giving better based on variables based on factors etc so like that you can develop the product and doe will help you and 
if you if you are working on a process if you are working on a process such as uh, like many people are working on uh, uh, machining uh, finishing friction steel processing friction steel welding friction surfacing etc right so there will be always some uh, uh, future gap I means there is, there will be some gap if you explore in any certain area like edm or ebm whatever the process may be if you are uh, developing some new process some novel process and if you are able to get some new parameters and new factors for your novel then your doe the doe tool will helps you to statistically prove your data and also to generate lot of uh, information such as the interaction of the plots and uh, combine effect uh, combine effect of the parameters etc analysis of variance so you can also you develop regression equations using doe and the regression equations can be further used for optimization using various optimization tools such as uh, genetic algorithm j algorithm etc yeah so doe makes controlled changes to input variables in order to gain maximum amount of information on cause and effect relationships with a minimum sample size right so this is the main advantage of doe so it makes controlled changes it makes controlled changes to input variables in order to gain maximum amount of information on cause and effect relationships with a minimum sample size means the sample size will be minimum so it targets to uh, reduce the sample size and uh, similar means uh, however it also controls the changes to input variables for giving better maximum amount right so if you are performing machining operation right so there are various parameters or factors involved in machining like uh, speed feed and depth of cut right and what is your response your response may be the material removal rate right material removal rate and the surface finish of time after machining say you have two responses one is surface finish of time after machining and the second response is material removal rate and your factors are speed feed and depth of cut right so what uh, if you apply doe then uh, you will understand how the how to control how how to make the control changes means whether the speed is required means whether high speed is required or low speed is required or medium speed is required while machining so and so material or whether low depth of cut is required or high depth of cut is required or the medium depth of cut is required for uh, machining yes sir uh, you are still showing first slide sir uh this basics of doe is coming six right? yes sir yes sir because actually uh slide is not moving so we thought uh, something is a uh, problem at your end okay uh, no 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 i'm just going uh, just uh, yes, sir, explaining yes. orally yeah sure sir sure sir. so basics of doe is visible na no? yes sir yes sir okay 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 yeah so uh so this is uh, actually uh, doe helps in uh, for making control changes to input variables in order to gain maximum amount so what i want to uh, tell is actually so if you are performing machining then this the controlled uh, changes like high, generally in machining say for example high speed low depth of cut will gives you better finishing when you are working on some Uh, ductile materials if you are getting continuous chips then uh, that particular parameters uh, used for that experiment uh, will be noted down and if you are getting continuous chips for a ductile material then your surface is uh, uh, means the the obtained surface is uh, smooth so there are there will be some factors some responses and some levels so that 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 levels factors can be decided and can be controlled by using this uh, design of experiment and when you talk about cause and effect so what are the causes and what are the effects so this this comes under uh, a quality aspect quality of aspect in any uh, engineering like in any uh, product development or uh, process development so what are the causes for the experiment and what is the effect based on that cause we also call it as a fish bone diagram or uh, cause and effect ishikawa diagram Uh, so for every process development or product development 
if you identify the causes and effect then you can uh, have a relationship between this cause and effect in order to get a improved output yeah so when analyzing a process experiments are often used to evaluate which process inputs have a significant impact on the process output and what the target level the input should be to achieve the desired output so doe is also referred in some cases in some books like as a designed experiments or experimental design so why we do doe so we generally like uh, we understand that doe we can use doe in order to get the interaction plots and in order to uh, minimize the number of experiments and save a lot of money to the industry etc right so if you go into clear picture so why we perform doe so reduce time to design right reduce time to design or develop new products or processes and to improve the performance of uh, existing processes improve reliability and performance of uh, products achieve product and process robustness perform evaluation of materials design alternatives setting component and uh, system tolerances right so these are the advantages we can say these are the advantages of doe like uh, why we use doe for example if you uh, develop some uh, design of experiment to some product and process and you have written some paper then you should justify why you have used doe for that in that particular research article and also uh, your justification should show in terms of the result right like the improved performance of existing process right so uh, the the result should be uh, some performance improvement or the development of a new product or development of a new process right or performance evaluation of some new materials and uh, improving reliability etc of a product so these are the main advantages like why we use uh, doe in engineering so history if you see some brief history so where it started and how it is going on and uh, what is uh, where, where the globalization started etc and what is the main uh, uh, literature uh, in doe etc so first it started in 1918 to 1940s so they worked on the agriculture origins so you can see r a fisher and his co-workers performed impact on agricultural science so they have developed they have implemented this uh, doe first on agriculture science so they have designed some factorial designs and anova so you will you will get in detail about the factorial experiments etc in the further sessions and also i came to know that uh, from the schedule that you have some uh, practice session as well on doe so where you can see about uh, anova and other details etc yeah so the first industrial era so in 1950s and late 1970s so box and wilson response surfaces right so this box and wilson is very popularly known this book design of experiments by box and wilson is very popular book in the field so where you will find all the details about doe <coughs> doe is vast actually it's not uh, a small uh, thing it's not uh, it's a vast actually there will be lot of literature lot of uh, technical terms lot of uh, details to learn lot of uh, things to analyze so uh, it's a vast actually it's a vast content doe can be taught as one master course for 6 months so we have doe for uh, mtech students for uh, uh, engineering purposes so it's a vast course and it's a very useful course once you once you know the applications of this uh, doe then you will uh, you can apply it and you can get more benefits <coughs> to the organization and as well as for your self uh, self uh, building of your experiment or product right so in 1950s and 70s they started applications in the chemical and process industries so the second industrial era 1970s to 1990 so they worked on quality improvement initiatives in many companies and cqi and tqm were important ideas and become management goals by using this uh, doe taguchi and robust parametric design process robustness is also started in 1970s onwards only so the modern era economic competitiveness and uh, globalization in driving all sectors of the economy 
to be more competitive so they are using doe so here you can see the history like where it started and uh, how the first industrial era second industrial era and how the modern era they are using doe so doe is a, a multidisciplinary subject we can say like it can be used uh, for in any kind of engineering and even it can it can be applied in agriculture science or chemical process industries mechanical electrical any any industry it's a it's a common it's a common course you can say it's a common area so some brief history you can see where it started and what is the origin and uh, how it is continuing now and how the globalization is driving in all sectors of an economy to be more competitive yeah a simple uh, doe example we can see here so what are the factors generally what are the levels and what are the responses generally we call okay responses is nothing but the output or the outcome factors are nothing but the inputs right levels are nothing but the ranges either low level high level or medium level so here you see a simple example so we have uh, uh, variables inputs say so first uh, first variable is uh, oven microwave oven say oven uh, second uh, factor or variable is uh, sugar and third is a uh, flour and fourth is x right in these are the factors so we have total 1 2 3 4 factors right and if you see the level microwave oven so say for example i am taking some oven so and you are uh, you are and the major <coughs> levels are the parameters which can i control using oven or one is the major is temperature right so temperature so what temperature you you what temperature you have to actually uh, bake the cake so your output is to prepare a cake right so what is the temperature exactly so you need to do some trial and error experiment or you can do one factorial experiment or you can perform design of experiment if you have if you have more factors in more levels right and another important uh, level can be a time right so what is the time required and what how much time you need to uh, bake the cake etc next sugar so either it is one cup sugar or two cup sugar required in order to get a, a better cake in order to get a Uh, tasty cake right flour so either one cup or two cup so in the present example they are showing uh, the present example they are showing uh, a cup of sugar and a cup of flour and three eggs three eggs and the combination of this sugar uh, flour and eggs uh, are mixed and as well as they, they are kept in a oven at certain uh, temperature say and it gives rise to an outcome so that is uh, taste color and consistency right so these three are the outcomes or the responses out of this particular uh, factors and levels right so if your job is to make a better cake with good taste color and consistency then you should able to have a control you should have a control variables of uh, Uh, the microwave oven with uh, temperature and time and the quantity of a uh, sugar and the quantity of a uh, flour and uh, the quantity of uh, eggs and after that you will uh, work on uh, the mixing of this uh, sugar flour and eggs and uh, you will uh, analyze uh, the temperature you will know you will get to know the temperature required etc yeah so wh why i am showing this example is Uh, you will understand what are the factors and what are the levels generally we are talking about and what are the responses we talk about in doe right and what are the independent variables and what are the dependent variables and what are the responses right so there will be some uh, interaction effect interaction of this uh, uh, parameters these these uh, factors for example if you add sugar with the flour so we will get a sweet taste right so if uh, if you don't add flour so there will be there will not be you cannot prepare a cake right so the combination of this sugar flour and eggs will give rise to a uh, tasty cake 
uh, when you cook in a oven right you can also take a simple example of cup of tea right so if you want to prepare a cup of tea then you will add milk so one, one glass of say one glass of milk and two teaspoons of sugar and two teaspoons of uh, tea powder etc right and you will add some ilachi if you want to add a taste and if you are you will sometimes you will also add a small quantity of ginger right so final output is uh, final output is uh, like a tasty tea right a wonderful tea right how do you prepare so there are uh, various factors involved in it and various levels involved in it right what are the factors for preparing a cup of tea factors are uh, milk uh, sugar Uh, tea powder and uh, ginger uh, and uh, like ilachi etc right these are the factors what are the levels so either you want to add uh, high milk quantity or low milk quantity or high sugar quantity low sugar or uh, uh, etc right tea powder what is the quantity you are adding right so uh, if like you can also uh, means you can plan you can plan in such a way that these factors and levels will have a uh, controlled will, will have a controlled on uh, the suitable control on uh, these factors in order to get a beautiful response right our dy helps you to get a wonderful tea or to get a wonderful uh, cake with the taste color and consistency and our dy helps you to set this uh, levels factors and it will shows the combined effect of this uh, responses and the com and the interaction of this uh, responses uh, sorry interaction of these factors with the levels and finally it will shows you the responses so based on the responses you will get an idea that which one is giving best which one is giving best what is the combination effect what is the combined effect of these factors and levels like that we can take a practical example of a uh, uh, cake or a cup of tea and you can correlate them uh, for dy how the factors and levels will help yeah so what are factors levels and responses so factors are inputs to the process factors can be classified as either controllable or uncontrollable variables right so some factors will be controllable and some factors may not be uh, controlled we cannot have control right in this case the controllable factors are flour uh, eggs sugar and oven and potential factors can be categorized using the cause and effect uh, diagram right so controllable factors means you can add you can add or uh, delete the flour we can add or remove the quantity of uh, eggs sugar and oven so uncontrollable variables means that depends upon the person like who is preparing the cake so if he is uh, new then uh, the mixing may be uh, different and if he is uh, experienced guy then uh, the mixing and uh, preparation of uh, the mixture may be different like right? so for every experiment like we'll have some uncontrollable variables which are not in our hand so we'll not uh, we will we'll discuss this uncontrollable variables how to minimize uh, them etc in the further slides so controllable we can concentrate and uh, based on this controllable variables in any experiment you can uh, arrange you can means you can have the suitable levels and the combination of factors yeah levels levels represent setting of each factor in the study examples include the oven temperature setting so number of spoons of uh, sugar number of uh, cups of flour and number of eggs right so these are the levels either uh, means uh, the levels means number of spoons so say three spoons of sugar is high two spoons is medium and one spoon is low if you conduct experiment then you will understand that whether the three spoons of sugar is better or two spoons is better or one spoon is better right so in a similar manner uh, the number of cups of flour and number of eggs are also uh, can be uh, in high level low level and medium level response response is the output of the experiment so in the case of cake baking the taste consistency and the appearance of the cake are measurable outcomes right 
potentially influenced by the factors and their respective levels right measurable outcomes means uh, here in this case like uh, we can uh, judge by the taste whether the response is better or the consistency it means if you are performing the cake with the same level of same levels and same factors and if you are consistently getting the same taste then uh, it has uh, designed in such a way so generally we see mcdonald's burger or uh, kfc chicken so they they maintain the consistency right wherever you buy so the recipe will be same means so the levels or the factors they use right the temperature the oven temperature or the uh, the levels and the factors they use will be similar right so that's why that's why the taste will not going to change even though you go for uh, any different uh, uh, shop different uh, like layout or in any uh, other city also right yeah so that that is where you can see how the doi help uh, how the doi can be uh, have a control on the variables and the levels in order to give the response and in order to maintain the response as well means in order to maintain the consistency of the uh, better response yeah next so general model so how the general model looks uh, in doi right general model of a process or a system right so uh, there will be some controllable factors and there will be some uncontrollable factors and uh, if you give uh, input and there will be an output right there will be an output so this is the general model so for uh, machining or for uh, finishing or for making a tea or for making a, a cake etc so the this will this loop will be same so in this like you should identify what are the controllable factors and what are the uncontrollable factors and you should identify what are the inputs and the input levels etc and what is the output you are getting output you are getting etc so this is this is a generalized diagram you can see in uh, uh, process or a system in doi and based on that you can actually design yeah next key terminology so uh, key terminology we generally use in design of experiment is interaction randomization blocking and replication so we'll see about one by one so what is interaction randomization blocking replication so interaction sometimes factors do not behave the same when they are looked at together as when they are alone right so in any machining or in any uh, process of uh, food baking uh, baking or preparation of tea etc so we observe we observe that sometimes the factors do not behave the same when they are looked at together when they are alone means when the when they are alone the response may be different and when they are uh, looked together the response may be different right so that is that is called an interaction we call it as interaction right interaction plot can be used to visualize possible interactions between two or more factors right so interaction plot interaction plot can be plotted based on your doi data and it can be visualized possible interactions between two or more factors involved in the uh, experiments right so there is one uh, thing you can observe if you observe parallel lines in an interaction plot it indicates that there is no interaction there is no interaction of the uh, factors the greater the difference in slope between the lines the higher the degree of interaction so by seeing the plots itself you can see the effect of uh, interaction you can see the interaction uh, like by seeing the uh, plots itself right so in various journal papers you will see this interaction plots when they are, when they have applied doi so if you observe parallel lines you assume that the factors are not uh, having any interaction and if you as you if you observe the slopes between the lines then you assume that the there is a high degree of interaction however the interaction plot does not alert you if the interaction is statistically significant right sometimes uh, the interaction may be statistically significant 
and sometimes you will also find that the interaction is statistically insignificant that also can be noted and uh, interaction plots are most often used to visualize interactions during ANOVA or DOE, right? While performing analysis of variance or uh, performing DOE, design of experiments, you will see this, you will observe this interaction. Next, randomization. So after developing DOE, I think all of them know how to design, how to select a new design and how to generate a design, right? So how do we do randomization? That depends upon uh, uh, the experiment you are doing and that depends upon the experimental setup and the conditions, the like the, the conditions uh, are the the conditions of that particular experiment, right? We do randomization. What is randomization? So randomization is a statistical tool used to minimize potential uncontrollable, uncontrollable biases in the experiment by randomly assigning material, people, or order that uh, experimental trials are conducted, or any other factor not under the control of experimenter. So when we use, uh, when we sorry, when we run design experiments, we will use experimental templates to set them up to the analyze them and, and up to, to analyze them, right? We do not want to actually make the experimental runs in the order shown by the template, right? So this template is generated by using a uh, design expert software or mini tab, etc. Generally, when you are performing, uh, you may not uh, do, you may not pursue the experiments based on the random, based on the experimental runs generated because uh, that depends upon uh, the your experimental conditions. So in my case, so if I'm working on say, for example, some uh, 200 microns abrasives, if I'm using 200 micron abrasives and, per, and I'm performing experiment, right? And uh, immediately uh, the second experiment, if the set is showing 100 microns, so I cannot remove the 200 micron abrasive particle from the setup and I cannot install immediately the 100 micron. Instead of that, I will randomize, right? I will, I will look into the experiments which comes and which falls under the 200, right? 200 micrometer. And I will complete that first and, uh, and I will go to the next level, next uh, parameter, next factor and I will continue that experiments, right? We want to randomize the experimental runs. Randomization of the run order is needed to minimize the impact of those variables outside of the experiment that we are not studying in the particular uh, DV, particular uh, template. Blocking. So blocking, we, we also generally do blocking. So this randomization, blocking and interaction, generally we do. We may not know, we may not know that the technical terminology that we call it as blocking or randomization. Blocking is generally we all do when we are performing experiments. So blocking is a technique used to increase the precision of an experiment by breaking the experiment into homogeneous segments like blocks or clusters. So you can divide the your design of experiment into blocks or clusters. And in order to control uh, any potential block to block variability, sometimes we can't totally randomize the experimental runs. Typically, this is because it will be costly or uh, it will take a long time to complete the experiment. So blocking means to run all combinations at one level before running all treatment combinations at the next level. Means we need to randomize according to the blocks, right? So, uh, so there will be some uh, treatment combinations. There will be some treatment combinations which are involved in the setup. And there will be some uh, uh, normal uh, combinations, uh, means uh, with uh, the levels and factors. So you can do you can block the levels you can block the you can block and you can separate these treatment levels to the next level and you can uh, uh, plan accordingly uh, and you can randomize accordingly uh, the blocks and you can perform your experiments for uh, better results replication replication is making multiple experimental runs for each experiment combination so this is one approach for determining the common cause variation in the process so that we can test uh, effects for statistical significance. So repetition. So repetition of a basic experiment 
without changing any factor setting so we all do uh, each experiment uh, three times actually when you want to uh, statistically analyze data and also when you want uh, the repeatability uh, and also when you want to identify the experimental error such as noise etc we we generally prefer to do each experiment thrice and these uh, experiments are done without changing any factor setting without changing any factor setting even though uh, even though you will uh, if you find any uh, error then we consider it as error due to noise so this may be because of the environmental condition and this may be because of the capabilities of the machine setup you are choosing etc so there will be various factors various factors so that's why in order to have better repeatability so we perform this uh, replication of the experiments so uh, so that the experimenter will identify the noise and will identify the error uh, while repeatability of the experiment right when you perform doi and publish if you try to publish the data in any journal so sometimes the reviewer also may ask like what is the noise and what is the error you found and how many experiments you have done for each experiment and how the error uh, means how the in how the replication and how the repeatability repetition is coming etc so based on that only we'll get certain idea that yeah the design is uh, the design which you are choosing the, the design which you are uh, implementing for the experiment is valid for that particular uh, combination yeah so experimental design process so how do we start and how do we end with right so step wise here you can see so first define problem right so when you start doing your uh, experimentation or when you start you are uh, doing some uh, uh, um, phd problem or mtech dissertation etc first you need to define problem and then determine objectives so how do you determine objectives so first you will define a problem and you will perform you will do literature survey in that particular area and you will uh, and you will analyze uh, what is the gap in the literature and based on that you will uh, determine your objectives right your objectives should be uh, in a bullet points like what is uh, what is the application of so and so material and what is the application of so and so process and where do you uh, like whether your objectives are novel or not whether these objectives are already done by some others etc so like that you will take care of the objectives so and uh, you will uh, determine your objectives next brainstorm right you will sit with your professor or will you will sit with your fellow scholars etc and you will brainstorm the session right so we will you will get you will uh, discuss about the experimental levels we will discuss about the factors we will discuss about your uh, uh capability of the existing setup and you will also plan whether to conduct this experiments using the laboratory setup or the uh commercial setup etc all those things can be done and next design of experiment right before this design of experiment uh, we will also perform this uh, pilot experiments in order to confirm the levels and uh, the factors which are affecting the response and once you design experiment then uh, the scholar or the experimenter will start conducting the experiment and he will collect the data right so uh, collecting data is uh, will take maybe uh, less time or more time depending upon your experimental setup and the availability of resources right and uh, after collecting data you will analyze data right here uh, uh, the software the design expert software will play a major role and also uh, this analyze uh, data means in terms of uh, analysis of variance you will do analysis of variance and you will see whether the model is significant or not you will see whether the la uh, means whether all the uh, your data is statistically accepted or not etc everything you will uh, do the analysis here for your existing data for your experimental data next interpret results right so we will uh, you will interpret all the results of time and you will uh, see the interaction you will see the combined effect you will see the individual effect on the responses and next verify predicted results right so once you get the regression analysis and uh, once you get the response surfaces 
uh, then you can also uh, verify the predicted results you can use this regression equations and you can use some uh, optimization software and you can verify the predicted results again by conducting the experiments you can also verify the uh, predicted results by conducting the experiments by we call it as uh, confirmation experiments so like that you have to plan so this is common for any area right so if you want to develop a new chemical or if you want to develop a new process or a new product so this is a general this is a general experimental design process so we define a problem we determine our objectives we do brainstorming and we design experiment and we conduct experiments we collect data we analyze data we interpret results we verify predicted uh, results etc so whatever the process may be you are doing either it may be a friction steel processing friction steel welding or edm process or any lbm process or any other process then the steps will be common right so uh, here itself like Uh, you will get a clear picture on uh, whether your data is uh, valid or not whether your uh, doe is giving uh, better output or not right so types of doe so when we are uh, talking about uh, uh, types then we have various uh, types like one factorial full factorial fractional factorial screening experiments response surface analysis etc right so we'll see one by one so how the one factorial two factorial full factorial fractional factorial screening experiments response surface analysis will uh, uh, will influence will will have a uh, influence on the response etc right so one factorial method so one factorial experiment look at only one factor means that depends upon your uh, experiment and that is that depends upon your uh, setup set up and uh, the conditions machining conditions or the experimental conditions of your setup right so one factorial experiment looks at only one factor having an impact on output at different factor levels so the factor can be qualitative or quantitative but there is however some difference so in case of qualitative factors say different suppliers different suppliers you identify and the different materials you get from uh, different suppliers etc no prediction you cannot predict the qualitative factors right no prediction can be performed outside the tested levels and only the effect of factor effect of factor on the response can be determined but whereas in case of quantitative factors such as temperature voltage load which are quantitative in nature can be used for both effect investigation and prediction provided that sufficient data are available for that particular experiment a single factor experiments anova models are used to compare the mean response values at different levels of the factor so each level of the factor is investigated to see if the response is significantly different from the response at other levels of the factor right so when you have only one factor and you can go for a one factor method and you can identify you can uh, you can do the anova model for this one factor and the mean response values you can compare at different levels of the factor right each level of the factor is investigated to see if the response is significantly different from the response at other levels of the factor right you can always compare this factor and level with some uh, experiment means with some uh, practical uh, example then you will get an idea how this one factorial two factorial full factorial so that varies that uh, the, the that varies with the experiment to experiment right so the analysis of single factor experiments is often referred as one way anova so use one way anova to do the following when you have one categorical factor and a continuous response right so determine whether the means of two or more groups differs so you can obtain the ranges of values of the difference between the means for each pair of groups and you can perform this uh, one way using either mini tab or you can also use design expert that you will get hands on in the later sessions and you can perform uh, this one way anova uh, by using uh, one factorial method right next full factorial so we we are familiar with this full factorial so generally without design of experiment say for example 
uh, x to the power of uh, say k, right? Say x is uh, x is levels and uh, k is the uh, factors, right? So if you want to perform uh, three to the power of four, right? It means that uh, x is three and k is four. Then uh, your uh, three to the power of four comes eighty one experiments, right? So if you are performing a full factorial method, then you have to perform eighty one experiments, and in that eighty one experiments, uh, without design of experiments, say, uh, then you will uh, put one uh, parameter means one factor as a variable and other factors as constant, and in that particular factor you will also vary the levels, and you will see the result. And uh, if you see the probability. Then uh, you will get 81 set of experiments to analyze the uh, result of all these parameters, like interaction of these parameters, combined effect, and uh, how the output is responding, etc. Whereas if you perform DOE, then we have various uh, designs uh, which gives the same impact, which gives the same impact. Such as uh, simply, I can take uh, Taguchi uh, uh, design, Taguchi design, or uh, the response surface. Uh, Design, etc., and I can get the same impact by using say 29 experiments. So it is uh, 29 in that 29 experiments again. Uh, I have uh, five experiments which are repeated with the same factors and same levels in order to have the replication and repetition. And uh, in that uh, 29 experiments, uh, five are same. Say we can say that uh, or, like overall we will be connecting some. 25 experiments only 25 or 24 experiments only that i will show you when i am showing my uh, uh, case study so uh, that we will discuss uh, when when i am discussing on the case study yeah so uh, in this way the full factorial method can be done and also this full factorial method can also minimized and designed in such a way that less number of experiments only Uh, uh, possible means we can perform only the less less number of experiments by showing this uh, by by like by applying this central composite method a box backen method in rsm or orthogonal arrays in taguchi etc all these are well planned and designed and uh, all are implemented in a uh, are all implemented in a software and ready for use right so you will get the same effect with less number of experiments uh, in this uh, full factorial method right so in full factorials all of the possible combinations that are associated with the factors and their levels are studied so the effect that the main factors and all the interaction between factors are measured if we use more than two levels for each factor we can also study whether the effect of response is linear or if there is curvature in the experimental region for each factor and for the interactions so this point to be noted down so if this you can observe from the uh, literature and also you can observe from your experimental whether you are getting a linear or the curvature so if you are getting a curvature then uh, you will find the optimum uh, optimum level and optimum factor and if you are getting the linear then uh, then you can think of uh, the response and the parameter condition the experimental conditions on how how the interaction is going to affect on each factor full factorial experiments can require many experimental runs if many factors at many levels are investigated right that depends upon again your uh, problem right so if you have more factors and if you have more levels then uh, you, you will get more number of experiments when you are going for full factorial method right next two factorial method so it's very simplest method so if you are experiments if you are uh, plan if you are design is having only two factors and two levels right two factors say for example two factors uh, with two levels right then your design will be very very simple so here uh, there is one small example also the simplest of the two level factorial experiment in a design where two factors say a and b are investigated at two levels say a is single replicate of this design will requires four runs yeah 2 to the power of 2 so uh, will requires four runs so uh, consider two factors say a and b so there will be four combinations 2 by 2 so 2 to the power of 2 
say two levels so uh, if you if you don't require a medium level in your experiment say only required a high level and low level you can see the runs here so the possible combinations are so you can conduct experiment on two uh, factors and two levels that is uh, high level high level and you can note the response and you can conduct with high and low with low and high with low and low and you can record the response according to the two factorial method right similarly this two factorial method can be analyzed in order to uh, uh, calculate the main effect plot for response and also the interaction plot you can see the formula actually so you will get this uh, result for main effect of a and main effect of b uh, directly actually using a software but here you can see some formula behind it uh, how do we calculate the main effect of uh, the parameter a and main effect of the parameter b in uh, two factor method right so in order to calculate the main effect of a so we need to take the mean response at uh, positive at the plus symbol uh, level minus mean response at minus uh, level so that is 30 plus uh, 50 uh, divided by 2 minus uh, 10 plus uh, 20 divided by 2 so that is you will get 25 so we are uh, calculating the main effect of a uh, by using this relation and we can also calculate similarly the main effect of b by using this uh, relation similarly you can see how the interaction is calculated right so these are these are actually directly calculated in the software like mini tab or design expert but you can here you can find how the formula can be used and you can also uh, apply this uh, formula uh, and you can uh, uh, calculate in the excel sheet as well right so interaction effect of a into b interaction effect of a into b so here you can see the slope you can see the slope of the two lines uh so the main response at uh, positive level minus mean response at uh, negative level and uh, minus you can see the uh, interaction into b so uh, we are multiplying both so finally we are getting interaction is obtained by multiplying the factors involved so say here uh, we are getting the value minus 5 right so if you plot it then you will get the interactive response fractional factorial methods so sometimes we use uh, taguchi and also we use uh, uh, other uh, fractional fractional factorial methods so these methods look at more factors with few runs actually if you want to run only few experiments sometimes your material cost may be high right or the tool cost may be high so if you are using a diamond cutter so then you cannot perform uh, 30 experiments like in response if you have more factors involved in it right so uh, in that case actually uh, if your factors are more and if you require fewer runs then you have to go for fractional factorial methods there is another advantage of this fractional factorial methods like in uh, case of taguchi so it will shows you the major contribution of the parameters and minor contribution of the parameters and completely insignificant parameters in the uh, study and you can eliminate that uh, insignificant uh, parameters and levels in the next coming studies and you can concentrate more on the major contribution of the parameter and the factor and the levels and uh, in that way you can uh, minimize your factors and levels when you perform the experiments by using the fractional factorial method using a fractional factorial involves making a major assumption that higher order interactions so those between three or more factors and are not significant say in case uh, three or more factors are not significant in this study so fractional factorial designs are derived from full factorial matrices by substituting higher order interactions with new factors to increase the efficiency of experimentation fractional factorial give up some power in analyzing the effect on the response fractional factorials will uh, still look at the main factor effects but they lead to compromises when looking into interaction effects so this compromise is called conformity right next screening experiments so we can also uh, we can also have a screening experiments so screening experiments are the ultimate uh, fractional factorial experiments these experiments assume that all the interactions even two way interactions are not significant so they literally screen the factors or levels in this process 
and determine which are critical variables and that affect the process output right in case of say machining so we we can we can say that which which is major uh, parameter right major uh, parameter say for example if you are just assuming a simple turning process so you can see the major effect of the parameter like uh, speed cutting speed speed and depth of cut if you are uh, like if you are uh, performing say uh, vibration assisted turning process then you can uh, also see the effect of the vibration amplitude involved in the turning and also the frequency of vibrations right and you can see the major contribution of this amplitude and uh, the frequency in vibration turning and how it will influence the response so like that uh, the screening experiments can be done and you can also identify the major effect and the critical variables by using this uh, screening experiment like if you perform rsm you will not find uh, that which one is giving major contribution but if you perform the screening experiments like if you uh, apply taguchi etc then you will <coughs> then you will find so which one is uh, giving major contribution in the study etc yeah so coming to uh, the another type of uh, devoe that is response surface analysis so actually uh, as per the schedule i understand that there are separate uh, sessions on rsm there are separate sessions on uh, taguchi separate sessions on uh, full factorial but uh, however i am giving the overview of devoe like what you are uh, going to learn and where this actually uh, fit for like the types of devoe why devoe right and what is the application etc so if you see a overview a glance of rsm rsm explores the relationship between several explanatory variables and one or more response variables so this method was uh, first introduced by gp box and kb wilson in 1951 and the main idea of rsm is to use the sequence of design experiments to obtain an optimum response response surface analysis is an offline optimization technique so this uh, rsm can also be used as an offline optimization technique usually two factors are studied but three or more also can be studied with response surface analysis we run a series of full factorial experiments and map the responses to generate mathematical equations and describe how factors will affect so this response surface uh, uh, analysis i will show you some uh, case study and also we will look into few case studies after completion of this uh, overview so in that case studies you can uh, see how the uh, equations are generated and how the analysis is made and uh, how the responses will interact will have how the factors will have an interaction effect combine effect etc so selection guide so depending upon uh, your uh, experimental setup and your uh, experimental conditions number of factors number of levels so here uh, like a few uh, few details are given like the number of factors comparative objective and screening objective so uh, if your number of factors are one then you can simply go for one way anova or simple uh, regression so if your number of factors are 2 to 4 then two way anova or general linear model or if you are having a screening objective means you, if you want to identify the major contribution of the parameter and if you want to see the interaction of the parameters and if you want to uh, identify the insignificant parameters etc then you can go for full or factorial fractional factorial design and if you are having more number of factors like five or more then randomized design uh, block design or you can also uh, means if your objective is screening then you can go for uh, fractional factorial design or uh, plaquet uh, borman uh, design right the, the, these designs are available in the software when i open the software i'll show you so how the fractional factorial design and how the box bacon design and how the taguchi design etc uh, you can open and you can explore your factors and uh, levels in that particular design right so uh, let us quickly go to the uh, case study so before going to case study i would like to explain my parameters my levels and uh, my process so that you will understand better 
how dy helped me in order to get my better response in my particular process say just for an example uh, nowadays i am working on uh, ultrasonic abrasive flow machining and as well as uh, magnetic abrasive finishing i will show you in these two processes how the dy helped me in order to uh, have a better response and uh, better uh, interaction of the process parameters etc right so let us see first so what is this abrasive flow machining so if you understand the principle you will understand what i am talking about so uh, the principle is simple here so this process is used for finishing for nano level finishing so uh, for interdisciplinary also it can be useful like uh, for example if you want to if you want a medical implant if you if you want to insert a medical implant uh, to a patient uh, then uh, we need a nano level finishing so that finishing the functionality of the finishing will be uh, have various advantages and if you consider a simple automobile so the parts which are uh, exposed to uh, environmental conditions so we should have uh, like environmental conditions and fatig loading contrast fatig loading then the finish of paint or the surface finishing will play a major role in order to improve the fatig properties of the component so there actually we require a nano level finishing in order to get that finishing actually we use abrasive flow machining as one of the tools say so i will explain a principle uh, it's, it's very simple so it consists of uh, two hydraulic cylinders and uh, two medium cylinders here the medium is actually a tool so we pump the medium to and fro uh, by using certain pressure by using a hydraulic setup so that the medium pass through the target surface and uh, you can obtain the finish so there are three important parts in my machine that is one is a machine and the second is the medium or the tool which we use and the third is the tooling or the fixture right so these three are important three important parts we have so uh, i have a variables with respect to machine settings like what is the pressure of time and uh, number of uh, runs or the number of cycles and i have the parameters some factors related to the medium like uh, medium when i talk about medium you would like to i would like to show this slide so medium or the tool in my process is flexible in nature so it is a combination of viscoelastic polymer with uh, special rheological properties and uh, mixed with the fine abrasive particles right it's very simple so we are uh, we are mixing the abrasive particles with uh, some polymer right the polymer is flexible in nature it is simple like uh, if you are mixing this uh, sand particles with uh, chapati atta right with a floor what happens so your uh, floor will uh, carry your sand your sand particles right then if you rub that uh, on a surface then what happens your sand particles will scratch the surface right will scratch and there will be some abrasion similarly here we are using some say some viscoelastic polymer with some special rheological properties and we are mixing with some sand particle why i am saying this semi solid means uh, if you add if you add sand sand particles in a water what happens it will settle down right it will settle down right whereas if you add your sand particles in your toothpaste say so just take your uh, toothpaste like close up or colgate and you add some sand particles in the toothpaste and mix it right what happens your sand particles will not settle because your toothpaste is uh, having certain rheological property right and it is viscoelastic in nature and what i just uh, just uh, try to brush it just put your sand particles on uh, your paste and uh, try to brush it what happens Uh, the sand particles will uh, abrade will abrade your teeth and you will get blood and also your teeth may get some finishing also right so you will get some finishing but uh, the scratching will take place and you will get some blood also out of it right and the spelling we are brushing here actually in a similar manner we are pumping with some uh, uh, extrusion we are pumping that uh, mixture and we are getting some abrasion and we are finishing so this is a technique simply and uh, in order to clear this uh, medium i would like to just show 
how the medium looks like so in the video you can see yeah in the video you can see uh, the media is semi solid in nature which is mixed with uh, abrasive particles and uh, we, this medium we are pumping to and fro on a target surface in order to finish and the ultimate application is we can finish the complex geometries and integrate uh, geometries by using this uh, medium right when we talk about uh, uh, a product development or a process development right in doe i am telling about this so this is actually a product development so when we worked on a product development uh, the similar uh, materials which 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 are having same properties like this like the viscoelastic and uh, similar materials uh, having the properties such as uh, like uh, we can consider say rubber or wax or synthetic materials when you have some four and five uh, products then uh, in my case dy helped me which one is giving better output right you can perform experiments on the developed products and you can uh, analyze the results and you can say which one is uh, giving the better result right so that that we have done during my uh, phd so here you can see this is the automobile component manifold are finished by using this uh, abrasive flow machine so here you can see the multiple holes of a manifold are prepared uh, by using this abrasive flow machine by pumping this uh, uh, medium we call it as a medium by pumping this medium by applying certain pressure etc we are uh, finishing so uh, the process development and product development when we talk about so this is a product in my case so in order to develop this product we have certain design and the process so when we talk about the process i will go to the next slide yeah this is a process development so i explained you what is the principle of afm right so we are just pumping the medium to and fro in order to get a uh, better result and uh, the key elements are the machine and the tooling which holds the workpiece and the third one is the flexible medium or the tool which we use in this machine right so the product development is over means we can have an alternate materials for that semi solid and you can perform experiments using doe and you can uh, get the better uh, analysis and uh, and better uh, alternate uh, medium out of the selected one and when coming to process so here you can see one unique process we have developed and we named it as ultrasonic assisted abrasive flow machine means in the in the previous case we are not vibrating the workpiece we are not vibrating the workpiece and here in this case we are vibrating the workpiece so what happens if you vibrate the workpiece so here this is the process development right so uh, we are vibrating the workpiece externally and we got a better result we got better result by by vibrating the workpiece ex externally say uh, why we got and what are the extra parameters i added so here i am vibrating my workpiece by using fizzo actuator which is connected to amplifier and uh, offset and uh, computer i am using by for varying amplitude and uh, say frequency so my new parameters here are the frequency and amplitude right now uh, my already existing parameters are so here you can see my hydraulic cylinder side so the pressure obtained so the pressure applied so extrusion pressure you can say so that is my uh, existing parameter and the media when i talk about the media so the abrasive size i am choosing the abrasive concentration and the abrasive viscosity the medium viscosity are the existing parameters and when we talk about the fixture so fixture means the constraint the workpiece configuration and the workpiece material you are choosing will be some factors or the parameters in my case now my new parameters in terms of process development are Uh, in terms of process development or the i am adding some frequency and amplitude right so those are the new parameters now uh, in order to see whether the contribution of these new parameters and also whether uh, these parameters are having more interaction with the existing parameters or not whether these these parameters are having uh, interaction with other parameters or what is the effect of uh, these parameters main plot effect combined effect all those things are uh, are essential if you want to prove that your process is uh, better compared to the existing process 
in that case uh, first you uh, design your process and you are list out your variables and factors and uh, do brainstorming and conduct experiments that is what uh, we have discussed right now uh, uh, i have designed a process so this is my new process uh, for which i am uh, uh, performing the similar action of uh, abrasive flow machining and apart from that newly i am vibrating the work piece so here you can see the work piece is vibrating at certain frequency and uh, at certain amplitude right so this is my novelty in the process so i will explain you how i design my experiments and how i validated them and how i uh, utilized doe concept and how i came to know that the parameter effect interaction effect and a lot of information can be extracted from doe based on my innovation right so first thing is your uh, process and the product you are going to select that is what important that is what you have to finalize and uh, doe will helps you to uh, to improve your process to improve your product okay in a better manner yeah so this is my uh, setup uh, uh, physical uh, means you can physically you can see the model so this is my kc n15 amplifier so uh, these are the amplifier and offset setup so here you can see the model uh, in the 3d model you might have seen in the previous video and this is the practical developed physical model so this is fabricated here you can see this is the actuator we are giving and this is the medium we are using so we are applying certain extrusion pressure and the number of cycles are counted and many other parameters which are involved are evaluated right so i will skip these principles yeah let us go to the design of experiments right yeah so uh, I, i just want to show my work because i want to uh, explain you how the product and process differs in your uh, plan and uh, how this doe helps you to improve your product or process yeah let us see uh, my experimentation and plan so in the overview we have discussed that we have various types of like full factorial two factorial one factorial and mixed and, and taguchi etc so how do we define and how do we design uh, your experiment that is what important in my case study in my uh, say phd work i have divided my experiments into three phases say phase 1 phase 2 and phase 3 so in phase 1 i have planned a set of experiments according to response surface methodology on finishing of uh, internal surfaces using say roller radial mode ufm process right so it means phase 1 i have planned using rsm so you will get to know in detail about rsm in that rsm session but i'm telling how do i utilize doe in my exploration phase 2 set of experiments were planned according to again rsm by using axial mode uafm so there is a certain change in the process here you can see so radial mode uafm axial mode uafm and uh, for both internal surfaces using rsm technology next three i have i'm using your taguchi so taguchi method because maybe my number of levels may be more and number of factors may be more and i am unable to conduct more number of experiments in this case here maybe because of the uh, material shortage or costly tooling i am using etc maybe whatever the reasons may be but i have chosen here the taguchi orthogonal array so in this uh, in this kind of model actually if there are more number of factors and more number of levels but less number of uh, experiments can be designed and you can uh, find out the major contribution of the parameters and you can also perform the regression analysis you can perform the anova analysis of variance and you can also identify the interaction plot mean plot and uh, combine effect etc everything can be analyzed by after planning your design of experiments right so these are my three studies which i have done uh, phase wise so let us look into the experimental procedure as i explained the simple principle so uh, simple principle of uh, uaf process so here you can see the uh, experimental uh, setup line diagram and uh, these are my work pieces which i am going to finish so you can here you can see in one case we have used uh, bevel gears and another case we have used aluminum alloys so which are applied here uh, 
two different uh, materials and two different uh, shapes are taken right uh, the idea is actually uh, aluminum alloys are used for aerospace applications so we have used 2014 so the finishing of uh, aerospace applied materials is uh, having a lot of demand so here uh, the material perspective is important here and then in the third case uh the design perspective means the part geometry perspective here we are using a bevel gear the material may not be a criteria here the material may be a simple mild steel or iron it but whereas the shape the geometry of the material is important so what you are going to finish whether it is a, a helical bevel gear or the bevel gear etc so like that i have chosen the work piece and i have uh, shown some video right on the medium so similarly i have four factors sorry four levels uh 150 mesh 200 mesh 300 mesh and 400 mesh and i have prepared my media at a different mesh size and you can see the flexible uh, behavior of the medium and this is an actually alternate medium to the existing medium so four levels i have prepared and i have checked the composition of uh, my materials my workpiece materials aluminum 2014 and en8 and uh, these are the few calculations of uh, uh, calculations required for measurement and characterization purpose yeah coming to this so this parameters set levels and this is one of the important thing so uh, i have now four uh, factors and uh, uh, say uh, five levels yeah five levels i want to make five levels yeah so uh, this this levels and factors have decided based on the pilot experimentation and as well as uh, my experimental conditions etc so in my particular case uh, applied frequency as i said that i am uh, i am using uh, ultrasonic frequency and i am applying uh, vibrations to the workpiece so this is the new parameter so far no one has discussed uh, in this particular area so i want to explore it completely so i kept this as a first input parameter or the factor <coughs> and the levels i can vary 0 to 20 so i can vary 0 to 20 so i have taken five levels extrusion pressure also five levels so this is a second factor and abrasive mesh size is the third factor and processing time is the fourth factor and these are the levels so next constant parameters are there so uh, this constant parameters are decided maybe based on the pilot experimentation where this contribution means uh, for example this media flow rate is taken constant maybe because of the design of experiment means earlier in the earlier design if your media flow rate is not showing any significant effect based on your uh, responses and your experimental condition then we consider this parameter as constant parameter and we will vary the other parameters which are showing a significant effect right so similarly the constant parameters are decided uh, based on your uh, pilot experimentations and previous designs previous designs and the, these are kept constant in the present study so abrasive concentration temperature of the media for example if you want to vary all these parameters your cost will increase and as well as your uh, number of experiments will increase and uh, it, it will become a never ending process so you have to uh, identify the factors and levels based on the literature based on the experimental uh, previous experimental plans and based on your uh, pilot experimentations etc right and my responses are so here you can see uh, improvement in surface finish and the metal removal rate metal removal uh, in milli not say here in this case so these two are the responses so once i design uh, uh, once i design uh, these four parameters and five levels so then i will get a uh, table then i will get a table that uh, standard table from using rsm so i have used uh, say central composite method using rsm so here you can see four parameters 1 2 3 4 parameters and uh, two responses or we can say four factors five levels and two responses so i got total some 31 experiments out of it and each and every experiments i have uh, recorded i have recorded the responses 
and uh, based on that uh, responses uh, i have identified which for which response i am getting higher surface finish higher surface finish and higher material removal rate from the table and when i see the interaction plots and uh, the residual uh, plot like, like best fit for uh, predicted values plot so here are the slope line and these are the experimental values and this the slope line is drawn based on the theoretical so you can see how close the experimental values for the theoretical values for both the responses and uh, you can we, we can also analyze the equations the regression equations for the present model and you can also identify the r square and adjusted r square value and based on that actually you can quantify you can evaluate whether the process is uh, properly is better fit or not for your uh, generated model right i think you will be discussing uh, in another session about this all this uh, 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 generating regression equation model etc uh, i would like to show you how these levels and how these uh, factors will influence my uh, responses right so my response is uh, uh, surface finish improvement and say this is are the factors right these four are the factors and i have varied five levels here you can see and i got here uh, the curvatures for each and every parameters right so you can also see that there is lot of uh, influence there is lot of influence on uh, these parameters and there is lot of effect lot of effect on these uh, parameters so these are the single these are the single factors uh, each and every factors are uh, explained in uh, separately explained in separately by using the rsm data and uh, you can see the increase and decrease of the uh, parameters levels with respect to the responses similarly when you combine when you combine and plot an interaction then you can see the combined effect see the combined effect of the parameters two or more parameters and you can also identify whether uh, this uh, combined effect is having some uh, difference difference in uh, when they are interacted and when they are seen alone when they are seen separately so here uh, you can see the applied frequency extrusion pressure and uh, abrasive size and uh, uh, processing time etc and their uh, combined effect etc yeah so this is for the second response effect of material removal so in this uh, effect of material removal uh, the response uh, curve shown for the second response and similarly i have plotted for uh, 3d combined effect plots and uh, the experimentally i have proved experimentally i have proved and uh, uh, there is an anova tables also which we will be discussing in further so anova table will represent whether the model is significant lack of fit is uh, not significant whether your r square adjusted predicted r square or in range as well and uh, you will uh, in a similar manner i have uh, conducted study on uh, for uh, say the second set here you can see ultrasonic frequency extrusion pressure processing time right only three parameters are varied right and uh, what i want to tell is here the abrasive concern, the abrasive mesh size is neglected in the second set because you can see uh, the abrasive size in the first set when i am working is not showing a proper uh, curvature and not showing a uh, correct result for example at 150 Uh, if the mesh size is lower the surface finish is increasing and further increase in the mesh size the surface finish is uh, decreasing and further increase further increase of mesh size again it is increasing right so it is not uh, it is not showing it is not showing a uh, convinced result and it is not also uh, showing an uh, significant result when when it is interacted so in the next set so that is neglected that part is neglected and uh, the number of experiments are also reduced you can see so we have taken only three uh, factors and uh, say uh, three levels so the levels are also minimized based on the previous result and the number of experiments are reduced here so you, you have saved a lot of time and lot of money here in the corresponding experiments and you can analyze you can analyze the anova and uh, 
and uh, you can uh, you can see the lack of feet and you can see the regression equations analysis etc right so for three levels and three factors you are getting 20 number of experiments when you apply rsm uh, technology R rsm uh, variant so so like that uh, uh, we are also working on uh, maf process recently recently we published one paper on maf uh, in a uh, in a good journal uh, there also we have applied doe that practically i would like to show you in the software so uh, before that i would like to show explain you the basic principle so magnetic abrasive finishing can be uh, defined as a finishing process with a flexible magnetic brush so composed by uh, magnetic abrasive uh, like here the process is simple so we are using a, a tool and uh, the tool is of uh, is a electromagnet and uh, we are subjecting to a magnetic field around the tooling around this is working zone and we are using some flexible i mean some abrasive particles mixed with iron carbon particles and we are preparing a brush here and due to the rotation and the slight gap between the fixture workpiece and uh, this uh, electromagnet uh the brush actually finishing the brush will formed is finishing the surface of this uh, work piece so by by using the video you can understand yeah so the process is very simple so this is a milling simple milling machine so in the simple milling machine so the electromagnet is attached and here you can see there is a slight gap maintained between the workpiece and uh, this electromagnet and uh, we applied a magnetic field here and you can see the brush formation of brush so this is a mixture of abrasive particles uh, along with the magnetic particles right and this brush actually will machine uh, will finish this uh, workpiece and there is a slight gap so we can call it as an unconventional we are this tool is not directly touching we are not doing any friction surfacing etc here we are maintaining a gap and we are generating a flexible brush here and uh, we are performing a finishing operation right on a flat surface so that is a simple process here so a lot of things parameters involved here like voltage and uh, rpm of this uh, rpm of this uh, electromagnet and the, the gap maintained right all these are the factors so let us see how we uh, identified the factors and uh, how doe helped us in order to improve our uh, results in terms of uh, response right so let us see some factors here so parameters and levels so the type the percentage of abrasives so the percentage of abrasives mixed with the iron carbon particles so we have varied three levels so 20 percentage 25 30 and the speed of electromagnet at different rpms say uh, 180 350 500 and voltage 30 40 and 50 so here we have uh, uh, three levels and three factors so if you you can go for uh, rsm you will get uh, 20 experiments based on the design and if you go for orthogonal array in nine experiments also you can uh, get the required result so uh, fractional factorial experiments and uh, response surface analysis full factorial, two factorial, one factorial. So there are various uh, DOE available, right? So based on your requirement, based on, uh, here we use L9 because we we want to finish the experimental set only in nine, with nine experiments because our uh, workpiece material is costly and our uh, abrasives and uh, particles are actually, we have a minimum amount of uh, uh, abrasives present at that particular time. So we use the L9 in that particular case and we performed a regression analysis DOE, which you are going to learn in the further sessions, like how to uh, do this ANOVA analysis, regression analysis, etc. Yeah. So after doing this experiment, we understand that uh, the influencing parameter, major contribution uh, of the parameter uh, for this particular result. And we uh, started uh, improving the result. So this is a DOE software. So let us go to, uh, yeah, so say for example, uh, this is the DOE software. So here you can see our uh, uh, various uh, methods like factorial, regular two level, multi-level, optimal, and response surface. So in the response surface, here you can see central composite box bacon method. And uh, you can also see the custom designs 
and you can also find uh, the takuchi method etc so let us go to our uh, quickly go to our model so that is uh, mm, sorry yeah so can you can you able to see my screen yes sir yes sir yeah, yeah okay, okay. So uh, we already designed, uh, as I said uh, in the recent paper, we have used this uh, design software and we have analyzed the parameters for magnetic abrasive finishing. I'll go to my design. So uh, this is my design, already designed. So you, you can learn, I think in the afternoon session you have hands on, you can learn how to design this, uh, I mean how to input these factors, levels, etc. in the hands on. I'm directly showing my result here. So this is my standard run. So we can do the randomization, blocking, etc., based on your requirement. And this is my run. Uh, so I have uh, four four factors. See here, you can see one, two, three, four. Four factors and uh, three levels. So here you can see abrasive percentage 25, 30, and 20. And uh, working gap here you can see 2.5, 2, and 3. Say uh, another uh, parameter that is speed. Speed is 1400 RPM, 1000 RPM, and 600 RPM, right? So if you perform a full factorial without DOE, then you will get uh, 3 to the power of 4, total uh, 81 experiments. Whereas uh, here I got only 27 experiments because I have used uh, RSM box bacon method. And in this 27 experiments, again, I think uh, some four experiments are repeated. Uh, in order to have the replication and uh, repeatability. So after uh, getting these responses uh, from the experimental, you will input all this based on this uh, uh, based on this uh, coded and uncoded values, right? So here I'm directly showing the table. So if you create a table, uh, you will see here uh, 50, instead of 50, you will see here uh, plus one, right? And instead of uh, 30, you will see here minus one and uh, high, low, medium level also you will see the coded zero, say for example, zero, one, minus one like that. So three levels. So here the three levels are already given input, right? After giving an input, then I can go for uh, the analysis. So there are three responses. So here I can go to the first response and I can get the fit summary so whether the model is quadratic or not, I can see. So here the uh, model is quadra quadratic and suggested, and I can go to the uh, ANOVA. So ANOVA analysis, I can find whether the model is significant or not, whether the lack of fit is significant or not, not significant. So you can go in detail about this uh, F value, P value, how to calculate sum of squares, etc. Uh, there will, for every uh, for every point there is a uh, equation and there is a terminology so uh, you can uh, you can go in detail about uh, all these things in a book so uh, r square value adjusted r square value predicted value so all those things uh, ano in the anova session i think you will get to know so you will go to diagnostics so you will see here the normal plot versus uh, residual plot so you will see the theoretical and uh, predicted values and uh, whether they are how close they are and how whether, whether they are within range or not etc so we learn this in the quality aspect right so the upper limit and lower limit whether the your uh, experiments are lying within the limits or not whether your predicted values are within the limit or not etc you can analyze this normal plot versus residual plot and you can also go to uh, model graphs, so 3D graphs like uh, the parameters uh, like voltage, uh, speed, like two parameters and their interaction. And you can vary the AB interaction, AC interaction, means the parameter A and C, and parameter A and D, and parameter B versus D, and parameter C versus D, etc., and A square. So, so one factor. So, this is uh, only one, one factor effect. And this is uh, say B, so the parameter B effect, and this is a parameter D effect, and a parameter uh, uh, D effect, etc. Right? So like that, you can have a one-factor effect and uh, multi-factor effect, etc. Uh, and the, all the equations are inbuilt in the software. Right? 
I'm not calculating anything, uh, but I have shown in the PPT how this uh, mean is calculated for uh, uh, one factor and as well as uh, for uh, interaction plots, etc. Right. So, and also we learned that whether if these are parallel, then there will be won't be any interaction, and when there is a certain slope, then we can assume that these parameters like the speed of workpiece and the voltage will have certain interaction. And similarly, if you see if the lines are parallel, then you can assume that okay, there is no much interaction of this voltage. There is no much effect if the working gap and voltage are controlled or maintained at various levels. So, like that, you can see the interaction plots and uh, uh, 3D, three-dimensional surface, 3D surface plots, etc. I think uh, hand, in the hands of session, you can uh, get in detail about all these. Uh, Tools, I think, I think they are they are already planned as per the schedule I have seen. So there you can explore uh, about this. So I just want to show how my uh, data uh, actual and how my coded data and how my how I get the ANOVA analysis done in a with a single step with a single step by using this uh, simple software. Right? If I go to this uh, uh, ANOVA table, so here I I can see the coded equation. And also the actual equation, uh, which is used for my prediction purpose, right? So here for delta R A, I'm getting uh, some. Uh, this is a regression equation I'm getting for a uh, for a given design, and I can use this equation and I can perform uh, prediction and I can perform optimization by using other software such as the genetic algorithm and uh, 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 J algorithm, etc. So similarly for the another output. I can also get a regression equation for actual equation and also for the coded coded values. So, so like that, using this equation again, you can uh, find out the error. Means this equation will gives you the prediction. So you can apply this equation in the Excel and you can uh, also uh, see the experimental result. So this is my experimental result, right? So these are my the experimental results. So you can uh, get an experimental error. So if the experimental error is more actually, uh, the DOE suggests to repeat the experiment, to repeat the experiment and uh, perform uh, perform two to three experiments like that. Yeah. So that is uh, what I would like to show you in this uh, session. Yeah. Thank you. Now uh, open for queries. Exactly on time, sir. Thank you. It's a sharp 12 o'clock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, so, first 10 minutes, I think uh, we were a little, uh, that interaction was there, no? Yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes. So, any queries uh, by the participants now? Uh, it is open for discussion. Uh, Professor, uh, I am Jinkar Anganayakulu. Yes, sir. Uh, tell me, sir. Actually, uh, I have attended some other conference also. There, uh, I found some criticism on design of experiments, sir. Okay. Why controversy among uh, this? In IITs only, some people they are practicing, some people they are not practicing. Is there any problem with this uh, design of experiments for conducting engineering research? Yeah, actually, means uh, means uh, I also heard that some journals may mm -hmm. may ask that DOE is not required like that. So. Uh, but the advantage wise, like as we discussed, there are a lot of advantages, but uh, some senior professors, they always prefer full factorial. Mm -hmm. Because, because uh, sometimes in some problems, if you go DOE, if you use DOE, then you will talk more on statistical data, interaction yeah. effect and all this, but you will talk less on physics behind the experiment, right? So in yeah. that case, actually the reviewer or the uh, editor will have some problem that, okay, the paper is mm -hmm. more covered on the statistical data, right? Instead of the physics behind. So if you cover yeah. both, I think it should be okay. Okay, right. thank you. Any other? Actually, what you said is true, sir, because many times uh, the physics is neglected and uh, that is the reason only maybe why they are unable to. Like, like you have shown this interaction graph, 
and uh, yes. if you are able to give a justification as these two parameters with the combined effect this is the physics reason why there is a interaction with the proper justification and exactly. then go for the response i think then uh, no one will object yes 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 only dye may have some problems but uh, yes, along with dye if some same figures are shown some interaction some physics behind shown then there won't be much problem yeah doe is just like a tool we we are just using this as a like a calculator just to give you some more uh, insights on the process but uh, the process physics should uh, drive the entire paper i think that is a very good answer and uh, yes any other queries you can unmute and you may ask okay Uh, I have one query, sir. Uh, sir, yes, in 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 your design, uh, you have shown uh, the uh, experimental layout and experimental planning. But uh, yes. if uh, your experimental design came out to be good, but if suppose we have some uh, outliers or something which is uh, uh, to be modified in the RSM, where these factors you can omit and then you can uh, go for the regression equation uh, again. So yes. if such a if if that is the case then uh, what is the uh, uh, what you call the regression coefficients that we get so did you encounter any uh, thing of that sort and if so what is the uh, best way to overcome it yeah actually i mean uh, i think uh, almost everyone will get some problems once you uh, input all your results in the right, right. most yes. of them most of them get some difficulties that may be because of experimental error manual error or the environmental condition that time or uh, maybe some other problems some other problems which are not in our control right so yes. suggestion is actually uh, means you have to repeat the experiments that particular experiments and your uh, regression also may change accordingly and uh, another uh, suggestion is actually means uh, after repetition of experiment after uh, that confirmation of experiments is also one of the important validation. yeah validation so uh, using that i think you can get some uh, outcome out of this yes. it is so yes sir okay uh, thank you sir thank you very much uh, you have given a complete overview actually right from the basics of doe to uh, some uh, history behind and then difference in the eras of uh, doe then uh, even you have discussed about the uh, trial method what is the drawback one factor at a time approach uh, how to uh, come up with uh, few important parameters using this ashikawa diagram or uh, fishbone diagram then factorial design and then you also explained about the uh, response surface methodology by taking the case study of magnetic abrasive flow machining and you have also shown your work uh, uh, the anim uh, sorry video of uh, uh, how the machining takes place and what are the parameters that uh, is considered and i think that is a, a paper which you have demonstrated which is a which is a direct uh, uh, general paper work of us you have demonstrated and then you have also shown design expert package software and uh, how to execute in a sequential manner and you also open a uh, 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 scope for uh, uh, taking making use of this regression equation for optimization using genetic algorithm or gi algorithm and all so i think this is a complete uh, summary package of uh, the entire doe which is capable uh, what it is capable of doing and how best we can utilize it and uh, i think that is the best uh, way to take off uh, in the in the initial stages and then uh, with this as input i think uh, all the participants can now uh, plan and then uh, attend the sessions for uh, a, a specific uh, um, uh, Uh, areas where they can they want to focus uh, thank you very much sir for giving a detailed discussion and uh, i think uh, uh, seamlessly you have covered the entire session uh, starting from the uh, basics to intermediate level and you have also opened a scope for advanced uh, researchers so thank you thank you very much sir yeah thank you dr varun and uh, thank you bbrit and uh, all other professors yeah
Uh, so participants, I have already shared the uh, feedback and uh, link in the chat window. Uh, so you can attend the second session that is uh, uh, at one thirty. So at one thirty, we are going to have another session at one uh, exactly at one thirty. So please do join at one thirty. Thank you all. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Uh, shall I close? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Okay. Okay. by all the participants so you can join back at uh, 130